Hello? Hello? I want to welcome everybody out there to the World Wide Web. Uh, first thing you've already learned tonight, tonight is that God still does miracles because I'm using technology. But what I want to do, I want to set the table for you uh, for the Bible study and the discussion you're going to be having in just a few minutes. Um, I want to give you a, a, a brief history lesson, uh, a reminder of a time period in Israel. Uh, then we're going to glean some very valuable application for our faith today. So I want you to set your minds uh, back to a time when Israel had just been miraculously freed from the Egyptian slavery. Uh, through a series of disappointing events, God's people were made to wander in the wilderness for some 40 years until everyone in that generation that refused to enter God's promised land, who refused to have the faith, who refused to make the sacrifices, until they all passed away. Now as that generation died off, a new generation emerged, one of commitment, one of trust, of faith in the Lord. And God anoints a new man to lead his people. His name is Joshua. And battle after battle, year after year, the people trusted God. They served him. They made the sacrifices until finally the whole land was subdued. Now each tribe, if you remember, each tribe was given a large section of land that God had promised. And after the land was subdued, before they went to that land that God had given them, Joshua brought them together and he puts forth a challenge. And it's very familiar to you. It says in Joshua chapter uh, 24, in verse 15, it says, If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people's response to that, it says, The people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. And that is exactly what they did. They did not forsake the Lord. They did not serve other gods, but they faithfully served in their generation. Now, while the land was subdued, there were still pockets of the enemy that were left in every single region of the land. And so each tribe was told to individually, when they claimed their land, to individually deal with the remnants of the enemy that still remained. Now this takes us to the book of Judges, where we learn that each tribe actually dropped the ball of disobedience. Instead of wrestling with the enemy, they chose to rest. Matter of fact, it comes to the point in the book of Judges, uh, chapter 2 and verse 8. It says, Then Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110, and they buried him in the territory of his inheritance in timnath Harris, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. And all that generation also were gathered to their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, who did not know the Lord, nor yet the work which he had done for Israel. So Israel begins to lose valuable ground that they had previously secured. And soon, the enemy strengthens and begins to afflict God's people. God then raises up an individual, began to raise up individual men and women that he calls judges to rally the people back to God. Judges like Ehud and Deborah and Gideon and Abimelech and, and, and Samson. And for a time when that judge was raised up, you know, the people trusted, they served, but then suddenly when the crisis was over, they drifted back to their old ways. Well, finally, God raises up a very transitional figure in the Bible. His name is Samuel. He serves the dual role as being both a judge, but he is also a prophet. He is a spiritual leader. And, um, and for a time... Israel then begins to become the people that God called them to be. But again, towards the end of Samuel's life, God's people do a very quick about-face. I mean, they had been serving the Lord, they had been very faithful, but suddenly you come to 1 Samuel, Samuel uh, chapter 8. And it says this in verses 4 through 8. 
It says, Then all the elders of Israel gathered together, and they came to Samuel at Ramah. And they said to him, Behold, you have grown old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king for us to judge us like all the nations around us. But the thing was disappointing in the sight of Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in regard to, in regard to all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Now I'm going to have you pause here in just a moment, and you're going to discuss some application this has for us today as God's people. After your time of discussion, I have a closing challenge for you.